Okay, here we are with our summer um, 21, and this is question paper 6-2, question 6. We're looking at an investigation to define an approximate value for the internal diameter of a test tube. Okay, we're going to do this by measuring the height and volume of water in the test tube. Okay, um, and the first thing we've got to do is measure H, so we'll do that. We've got 3.2 centimetres. Okay, as is ever, slightly different value to the mark scheme, slightly lower. Okay, there's a scaling error there, and so therefore we're going to have that acceptable. That's completely fine. If you're doing the exam, you wouldn't have this problem because your papers will be identical to the markers, so don't worry. Again, key with this is to make sure you give the nearest um, millimeter in your answer, okay, because you never know when you might need that. All right, so what we're going to do there um, is we put in our height h in centimeters, 3.2, okay. And we're told this is the reading R of the water remaining in the cylinder. So we'll, cap, we'll, we'll measure that value and stick it in the table as well. We've got 90, we've got 10 divisions, so each division is one. And so, so therefore, this is gonna be 91, and that's us putting in um, our reading in the table. Now, I really would encourage students at this stage to start ticking things off. We've got a lot of readings to do. I would suggest here that maybe just tick this, okay? Just to check that you've done something there. All right, anytime you have one of these instructions which look a little bit empty, where there's no space to write, maybe tick it, and that way it's just kind of a little mental check to make sure that you are um, doing what you need to do. Okay, calculate the volume. We're told in the equation, 100 minus R. We've got R. We know that there, that's 9, uh, 100, take away 91, which is equal to 9, and we'll stick that into our table. This is pretty nice, right? This is one, two, three marks for a bit of reading and a bit of maths okay for which you're given the equation so i hope we're all okay with that the bit that's probably a bit harder is then the graph okay i'll just move my um paper over a little bit so you can see a bit more clearly we're asked to plot a graph okay and you are told to put v on the vertical axis and h well h must be on the horizontal if it's not on the vertical okay and if we're looking at our graph we're looking at the three marks available to us. First things first, we're asking to label it with a quantity and a unit. Now, lucky old us, those quantities and units are in the table. So just copy what is in the table, okay? This is not, not rocket science for this one. Okay, we've got, we're not gonna go, we're um, not gonna go too wild with this. We're then gonna use sensible linear squares, or uh, linear scales, linear scales, if I can say it. Now, what do we mean by that? What it means is we want to be able to use a lot of the graph paper. There's no point in making a small graph, okay, because it's not easy for anyone to read. So we want to use our scales cleverly. Now what I've done here is I've divided up the boxes into tens on the y-axis and then twos on the x-axis. And those are two good numbers. Generally, ones, twos, fives, tens, maybe fours are good. Stay away from threes, from sevens, okay, from nines, because they're messy, all right? The 10 is the ideal because that means each of these little boxes is um, one point, one mark, sorry, or, or one one value, or for example, 0 0.1 would also work. Um, just obviously depends on what it is you're plotting, okay? Um, you're then asked to check if your plots, uh, your points are plotted correctly. Okay, now notice, I think the not thing to notice here is that you are allowed a little bit of um, leeway here plus minus half of a small square and what this means if you're having trouble with your scales you couldn't quite plot the value correctly you are allowed to be a little bit off but not too much okay so just be careful remember there's someone whose job it is is to check your graph all right and you would hate to lose a mark purely for uh, plotting a point wrongly okay if you notice in my one I think I've got most of my lines uh, my points correctly why well because I can see that it's a nice straight line and that's what we generally tend to expect in these questions it's a nice um, straight line now um looking at the mark scheme for 6c2 or cii um i can see why i like recording these videos because literally what they've said there is best fit line okay draw the best fit line and again you might want to tick this once you've done it to show that you're aware of what you're doing really what we're doing here is we're drawing a line through our data and that's that green line there Okay, that line has to be as close as possible to all of your data points. Okay, now this is one of these things that you just need to get your ruler out and try. If you've plotted your data correctly, 
then you will find it's fairly easy to draw this line. If, however, you have not, you've made a mistake somewhere or you've had a problem with some of the data processing, that's where you should go back and check because generally physics papers will like you to have a nice straight line, unlike other uh, disciplines. So I'd imagine in biology it's different, chemistry also. Okay, so try and draw that straight line through there. As long as it's close, close to the points, you're probably going to be okay. All right. Now, once we've drawn our straight line, regardless of what your straight line looks like, even if you've drawn it in a complete wrong direction, you can still get marks because you've got to calculate the gradient. And what we're going to do is use a bit of maths. We're going to use the change in y over the change in x. And we're going to indicate on our graph where you get your data from. Okay, and it does all say, it does say that in the question, so this is not a surprise to us. What I do is I choose two points which are very far away. Okay. Um, these two points should be located at least half of the hypotenuse of your whole line, length of your whole line, sorry. And so choose them far away. Don't choose your data, choose a point from the line and then draw a circle around them. Okay. That should be enough for you to get that first mark indication on the graph of where these numbers came from. We're then going to do a calculation. We'll work some things out and we'll find our m value. In this case, my m value is 3.78. Now, is that a good value? Well, if I look at the answer, they want me to have 3.7. So I'm pretty much in the right ballpark. It's really three, I'm really 3.8. I'm a little bit bigger than it should be. Maybe my line's not perfect, but that's fine because there is a range. You can have anything between 3.7 minus 0.2, so that'd be 3.5, and 3.7 plus 0.2, 3.9. So we're going 3.5 to 3.9. And that means my value, which is 3.8, is well within there. Okay, so if you're thinking about whether your answer was a good one, then that would be the indicator there is the value of the gradient. But remember, it doesn't, if you've done your graph badly, you've done your straight line badly, you can at least get marks by indicating how you've got your gradient. And really, in this test, is about getting as many marks as we can. Okay, we're then asked to calculate the internal diameter, and it tells us how to do that. Okay. I've done 0 0.5 times 9 times m, which is the gradient, and I get a, a 2.228. Okay, now I know that generally we measure d, uh, distances, etc., to the nearest millimeter, so I'm going to put my answer in the nearest millimeter as well, 2.2 centimeters. All right, we're pretty much there. Okay, we're being asked why we hold the ruler close to the test tube. Well, remember, this is really making our, our um, values accurate. Okay, this is making sure that we're avoiding that parallax error. Okay, by holding it close to the um, to the test tube, it's making sure we're reading the appropriate height and therefore allowing us to be accurate in our experiment. Okay, last one then, and this may be one that we might miss. Okay, it, we're asked to suggest another reason. So not parallax. We're not allowed to talk about parallax in our in our answer here why our value for the internal diameter is only an approximate one. Well, I think for this one, maybe we need to go and have um, uh, a quick look at the drawing here. Okay. Here, we're trying to measure this internal diameter. Okay. So we're trying to think of why our values might not have been correct from using that method. There's a number of them, and you can see them listed there. Okay. Well, one reason that it's not necessarily accurate is because if we're trying to measure this volume, on this, we would obviously like these this value to be as precise as possible. And the measuring cylinder only reads to one centimeter cube. Well, maybe we want to measure it to the nearest 0.5, and that would give us an even better value for volume, value for volume, if I can say it, and then therefore a better value for the internal diameter. Okay, you may have water sticking inside there. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Well, why is that a problem? Well, that's going to change if the water is sticking inside the test tube. Remember, we're using that water. We're pouring it into this. If there's less water coming out, then we're going to get a wrong value for the volume and therefore a wrong value for the diameter. Okay. Similarly, this is a, I think this is a good one. We're assuming here that the diameter of the boil, boiling tube is uniform, that this is a perfectly manufactured piece of kit. Well, there's always errors. There may be a little bit down at the bottom, which is slightly thicker than the bit at the top. And so therefore, to come up with that value is going to be very difficult. All right. There's lots of answers here, and you can see them in the mark scheme. Okay. Um, when I wrote this, I talked about the content thickness and I also talked about ignoring the rounded shape of the test tube. We haven't included that in there as well. And that's another part um, down at the bottom there. You don't need to give two, but when I'm writing these answers, I'd like to give a couple more just to give some examples to students. 
there we go, 12 marks. Pretty nice, a few calculations, a bit of graph drawing. Um, folks, if you've got any questions, if you'd like me to talk about a particular question, please let me know in the comments section. I'm very happy to do so. All the best.